Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is one of my favorite games of all time. In fact, it's probably my second favorite just under Super Mario Odyssey. However, just because I really like it, doesn't make it perfect. No game is. So today, I want to take a look at some small nitpicks I have with the game that I would like to see changed in a future title. Now, a nitpick by definition is a small issue, meaning that most of these aren't really big deals, so just keep in mind that I don't cry myself to sleep over most of these. This is actually the second time I'm doing this. The first was over two years ago, which means that since then, we have gotten five new DLC characters, so a lot of this video will be focused on them. One big change from that first video though is that I thought it would be fun to include you guys this time around. See, I created a community post asking for ideas and there were a lot more than I expected. So what I'm going to do is spend the first half of this video on the list of stuff I made and then spend the second half looking at some of your nitpicks. I'll even choose some I don't agree with since I think it would still be interesting to discuss them. Let me know what you all think of this format because it's something I've never really tried before. I mean, I think it's a win-win. You get to be like, whoa guys, look, I'm in the video and then I don't have to think. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, but with that said, let's jump right into my first nitpick. So as I said, since my last nitpick video, five DLC characters were released. Steve, Sephiroth, Pithra, Kazuya, and Sora. Of these, one of them just so happened to be my most requested character ever right next to Drybones, Steve from Minecraft. Lucky for me, Steve's moveset turned out to be way more fun than I was expecting, so he became my new main alongside Kirby. However, that means that I've noticed quite a few things about him specifically that I would like to see changed, and that's certainly helped by Minecraft being my most played game ever. So first off, I understand Steve and Alex not having voices. As funny as it would be for them to make the old oof sounds when they get hurt, that's no longer in the game anymore, so I get why they don't. Oh yeah, speaking of dead oofs, rip the Roblox oof, man. I mean, what is this new sound? It just sounds terrible. So while it does make sense for the first six costumes to stay silent, I think it'd be really cool if the zombie and enderman costumes made the noises of their respective mobs. I'd love to hear the classic zombie bruh during a fight or the enderman having a stroke upon death. They probably didn't add these because technically these costumes aren't the mobs themselves, but rather skins for Steve, but come on, the announcer calls them zombie and enderman, so there's zombie and enderman in my heart. Now, even without having unique sound effects, these costumes are still really good. One costume that is not good in the slightest is a little old alt known as Tennis Steve. First off, it's ugly, even before Smash I hated how this looks. Secondly, Alex has a much better tennis alt, so why on earth would we need two tennis alts when Minecraft skins could consist of literally anything? But the third and biggest reason I hate this skin is because Tuxedo Steve is not an option. This is the most iconic alternate form of Steve. Uh, it's the second most iconic alternate form of Steve. I was really looking forward to being able to use this alt, as the one I currently use is just the default Steve, but I definitely would have also liked to use Tuxedo Steve. So I really hope Tennis Steve gets murdered for the next Smash game. Alright, that's it for the costume stuff, but we aren't done with Steve just yet. One thing I really like about Steve is his simple animations. Not only does it work really well in Smash, but it makes him one of the most faithful characters in Smash Ultimate. However, these simple animations can occasionally make it difficult to tell what Steve's doing. This is especially bad when trying to hit him as his knockback animation is pretty much just the same as, well, him jumping. Now there's actually a pretty good solution to this problem that I think would make Steve even more faithful, which would be to make him flash red for a second after getting hit, which comes straight from Minecraft itself. I'm honestly a bit surprised they didn't do this, as it feels like it'd be pretty easy to add and would help him fit in a lot better. Though it could also get annoying, so who knows. Speaking of Steve dying, I think it'd be really neat if he had a unique stamina mode KO animation where he would poof away and leave some of his items on the ground for a bit, just like dying in Minecraft. Now before you all call this a stupid request, Terry got a unique stamina mode animation where his hat goes flying, and even Sora got a unique stamina KO animation, so this is definitely more than possible. Maybe the zombie and enderman skins could even drop different items based on the mob's loot tables. Now one big part of how Steve plays in Smash are his different tool types, as at any point he could have wood, stone, iron, gold, or diamond tools. I really like this mechanic as I think it's a perfect way to represent the survival mode, however it does make practicing combos in training mode with the character a bit difficult. I really wish there was a way to save a certain inventory of tools in training mode, so that way when you reset, it'll start you with whatever tools you want. With how much practice Steve combos require, it's definitely pretty annoying to reset without thinking and then have to mine to get whatever tool I want to practice with. I know there are mods that can help you with this, but there are mods for literally everything and also I don't like modding my Switch. Now one thing I really really like about Steve is that he'll actually change what blocks he can build with depending on the stage. Most of the time he'll just use dirt, but some stages will let him use sand, wool, or even ice instead. While this mechanic is really cool, I think they could go a bit further with it in the next Smash game. Obviously I'm happy with what we got, but I'm just saying they could always add a bit more. I was kind of thinking of making a video where I talk about what blocks each stage should give Steve if any block in Minecraft was on the table, so let me know if you all would want to see something like that.
Okay, last one relating to Steve, I swear, but this is by far the biggest one. Now, I've gone on record saying that I think Steve has the second best music selection of the DLC right behind Joker. I still definitely agree with that, but there is a good reason it's not first place. If you take a look at the list, you may notice that absolutely none of these songs come from the main game, instead coming from Minecraft Dungeons and the battle mini games from the console version. Now, the music they do have is really good. Holland is my favorite remix in the game, and I think I'd even go as far as to say that Glide is my second favorite, too. I was really happy to see the minigame songs come as well because I have a ton of nostalgia for those, but not having anything from the main game soundtrack really sucks. C418's music is some of the most iconic music in all of gaming, so not seeing it here was a real bummer. Now yeah, Sakurai did say that the Minecraft music was too peaceful, however that wasn't actually a full translation as he actually said something along the lines of there being other issues as well, so it's theorized that either C418 didn't let them use the music or they just didn't bother asking. Either one of those suck, and I really hope that we're able to get songs like Cat, Sweden, Aria Math, and more in the next Smash game. At the very least, I think we could probably get Pig Step and Other Side in the next game as they are made by Lena Rain. Plus, they're also some of the most popular songs on the soundtrack. Pig Step is literally my favorite song in the entire game. Okay, enough about Steve. Now, in all honesty, I wasn't really able to think of a good one for Sephiroth. However, there is one kind of around him that I want to talk about, if that makes any sense. For whatever reason, Smash Ultimate doesn't have a good way to refight any of its bosses. Previous games had a boss rush mode, but Smash Ultimate only really has Sephiroth's classic mode, which of course you have to play Sephiroth in. What annoys me the most about this is that they have the perfect place to have these rematches, that being in the Spirits menu. In an update, they added the ability to refight Spirit Battles to go for high score which is something that I enjoy doing. All of the bosses have spirits in the game, but for whatever reason, we can't refight them here. So my suggestion is, let us do that. You know what, speaking of spirits, I actually have two more things to talk about for them, so that'll give us a bit of a break from the DLC fighters. First off, I understand them not wanting to make and model trophies. That probably took a lot of effort, and with each game getting more and more, this simple image approach makes a lot of sense. What I don't get though, is the fact that each spirit doesn't have a description. In previous games, trophies all had descriptions about the character or thing featured, which made them all really interesting to look through. What the frick, is that a Ouija reference? Spirits though, don't really have anything, and I can't really imagine it'd be too hard to have done this. A lot of people don't really like spirits for this reason, so I think if they put in that extra effort, people would have been a lot more receptive to them. The last spirit thing though, is that I don't like that some fighters don't have spirit artwork and instead just use their renders. Those characters are Pokemon Trainer Red, Pokemon Trainer Leaf, Male Robin, Female Robin, Female Wii Fit Trainer, Male Wii Fit Trainer, Cloud Advent Children, Me Brawler, Me Sword Fighter, Me Gunner, and Kazuya in his default costume. Now of these, I only understand the Mii since they're obviously original to Smash, but everyone else makes no sense to me. It's not like they don't have artwork for their original games. Red and Leaf have plenty to work with. The Robins could use their images from when they're talking in Awakening, or they could use their art from Fire Emblem Heroes. And the Wii Fit Trainers have plenty of spirits featuring them, so one of those could have been their fighter. Cloud is actually interesting, as originally his default alt also didn't have spirit artwork, but it actually got some after Sephiroth came as DLC. Shoot, we're back to DLC. This was supposed to be a break from them. Well, anyway, I'm guessing that they couldn't have art for Advent Children because of copyright, but it's not like there isn't any. Finally, we have the one that confuses me by far the most, Kazuya Mishima. First off, his alt with his jacket does have spirit artwork. Secondly, Namco, the people that made Tekken, also work on Smash Ultimate, meaning there should be zero copyright problems here. And thirdly, there's plenty of artwork of Kazuya in this appearance. So yeah, no clue why he doesn't have artwork. My problem with Pyro and Mithra is that they were added instead of Freddy Fazbear. The weaves don't deserve the W's. Freddy is way more awesome. <laughs> for Kazuya, we already talked about the spirit thing, so the only other real thing I have for him has to do with his victory theme, or lack thereof. Kazuya Mishima wins. Now don't get me wrong, I love the announcer from Tekken being here, but it just feels really empty without music. I get that Tekken doesn't have any victory music, but it just doesn't feel right in Smash. I don't think anyone would have complained if we got a remix of, say, Kazuya's theme as a victory song of some kind. Before we move on to our last DLC character, I want to talk about two things that have to do with the game's controls. I'm throwing them in with the Kazuya segment because, uh, he controls weird, I don't know. First off, did you know that the grab button isn't really a grab button? Now yeah, that may seem kind of stupid, but let me explain. So when you press the grab button, instead of just activating the grab move like you would expect, this button actually makes you 
press shield and A at the same time. If you didn't know, if you press A while shielding, you'll grab, so that's why it does this. Now why is this an important distinction? Well, if you've played Smash for as long as I have, you may start to notice that occasionally, instead of grabbing, your character may end up doing something like a jab or a forward smash, which should absolutely not be happening at all. This is such an incredibly annoying mechanic that really shouldn't exist. All it does is just make more miss inputs happen, so my suggestion is to just make the grab button activate grab in game. I know, really weird concept. If anyone is against that change, please let me know in the comments. I really can't see there being any defense for how it is now. One that's a little bit more arguable, though, is this next one. Now, I personally play with Smash Stick. Yes, you can all make fun of me in the comments, but I think if I play with Smash Stick on, there should be some sort of option to disable Smash Attacks being activated with the A button, like how you can disable them from being activated with A and B. Like, obviously, if I have Smash Stick on, I'm not going to be using the button, so this just leads to a ton of misinputs. Again, this should just be an option, as I'm sure some people would still want to have the button, but really, I would love to be able to disable this. Alright, we've made it to our last DLC character with Sora. As a character, I think he's fu- Okay, no, actually, he's super annoying, but my nitpicks have to do with the other stuff in his pack. First off, we have to take a look at his stage, Hollow Bastion. This is really neat, and it's actually tournament legal, which you love to see. If one of the players reaches their last stock, the stage will have a really cool looking dive into the heart transformation, giving the last bit of the battle a really unique atmosphere. That is, if you're playing with hazards on, which most competitive players don't. There's absolutely no reason this should be marked as a hazard. This doesn't affect gameplay in any way. Everyone agrees that this transformation is really cool, so please make this not be a hazard in the future. The final issue has to do with Sora's music, though unlike Steve, I think Sora's music selection sucks. No new remixes, and the songs that are here are incredibly mid. I'd probably say it's slightly better than Dragon Quest, but that's not saying much. Actually, though, there is one song on this list that I like a decent amount. It's, uh, um... Hey, wait, where is it? Well, as it turns out, Sora is the only DLC character to have a song, Dearly Beloved Swing version, locked behind a second paywall. Now, this isn't any simple 75 cent paywall like Megalovania. Instead, you have to buy a whole entire other game in order to unlock this song. It sucks because this is easily my favorite song from him, which makes this even more annoying. I really hope this isn't the case if Sora comes back to the next game, because I'm not buying a whole game I don't care about for a song that I could really go without. With that said, I would absolutely pay $100 for Pigstep to be out. But that's it for my nitpicks. Now I think it's time we look at some of your all's nitpicks. I picked the ones that I thought would be the most interesting to talk about, most of which I agree with, but there are a few I disagree with, so let's jump into these. First off, the two most like comments were pretty similar. Both B and Firestar Films YT wish that the game would save both the character you were playing as and the costume between games. I absolutely agree with this. In previous games, this was actually saved between games, but for whatever reason, this was changed in Ultimate, so now you have to pick your character each and every game. It can be especially tedious, as Smash Ultimate sometimes takes 4 billion years to load a character's costumes in, so if you haven't memorized what number the costume you want to use is on, you have to wait a while for it to load in. Maybe if they were concerned with people starting the game before the other player has the chance to change characters, they could require everyone in the game to press start for the game to begin or something. It would definitely make local play a bit less tedious. Zachary says, in the stage builder, you can't change the background after you choose one the first time you create the stage, so if you decide you want a different background after you spend a lot of time painfully building a stage, you can't. Also, there's no copy and paste in the stage builder, which really sucks, especially when you're trying to make a stage symmetrical. Now, I'm not one to really use the stage builder at all, but even I'm annoyed by the lack of a copy and paste feature. I mean, you can select entire land masses, so it just makes sense that there would be some sort of way to copy and paste them. And also, not being able to change the background is a bit silly. I mean, it should just be as easy as an option swap. Mr. Cynical says, Sheik never uses her harp in Smash, even though it's her most defining trait besides being a ninja. After finally beating Ocarina of Time myself earlier this year, I can't agree with this more. The closest she has is this really weird taunt using her string. I mean, I think the sound it makes is funny, but really it should have been the harp. Additionally, I think Young Link should also use the ocarina during one of his taunts. Probably his up taunt, since that's definitely the most basic of the three. Nevix says, Something that bothers me a lot that I don't see many people talk about is that I have to beat the story mode to change the menu music. In Smash 4 and Brawl, you didn't have to beat anything to change the menu music, but I guess it isn't that big of a deal. This is actually the first one I disagree with. I think an aesthetic change like this is a good reward for beating a side mode. Honestly, I wish there were more sort of rewards like this for the other modes. Maybe if you beat everyone's classic mode, you'll be able to play any song on any stage, or something like that. If there were no reward for beating World of Light, it'd be kind of lame, but at the same time, you don't want the reward to be too major either, as to make people feel like they're missing out if they don't want to play the mode. So I think the menu music is a good reward here. Parappa the Lagger says, he looks just like my dog. What are they talking about? 
Oh, he's talking about the freaking image I used in the community post. Just a normal account, nothing to see here says, me is getting the short end of the stick on everything. Not being included in random selections, not being an option for Smashdown, not having classic modes, etc. Definitely not a necessity, but definitely a big nitpick for me, as I feel like there are very easy workarounds too. I couldn't agree more, there were quite a few me related comments, but I think this is the one that put it best. I mean, I get that there's supposed to be original characters for Smash, but there's really no reason at all that they should be cut from most of these modes. I think for random, they should have pre-made me's with the default look that you could get off of there, because as it is, I have barely any playtime with me Swordfighter and me Brawler, purely because they aren't on random. Oh, and they definitely could have had classic modes. I created one for each of the me's in the classic mode fixing video, so check that out if you want to see what I did. But yeah, happy the me's got a bit better treatment in Ultimate than they did in Smash 4, but it still could have been a lot better. Toxic Joshua says, Mario got too many stages for me personally. Shut up, Joshua, Mario is awesome. Orange Toad Gamer says, I don't like how the announcer doesn't say, the winner is, anymore like in Smash. Four. Oh, winner is. That belt looks good on you, son. Little Mac. This one has always bugged me too. Saying the character's name first before saying they won makes it feel like there's zero build up to it. The winner is, before the name slammed on screen alongside the announcer saying it, was so much better as the conclusion to a match. Now it's just weird that the announcer says the name before the name appears on screen. Definitely something I hope they change back. Thomas says, there are 1,513 spirits, one of them added after Sora, ruining the perfect shape of the spirit list. Basically, what they meant was that the spirit list ended with a full row until they added just one more spirit to the list post-Sora, ruining it. Now, this may be weird for some of you all, but I actually disagree with this one being a problem. Why? Well, I just think it's extremely funny that this list was perfect until it was suddenly ruined by <gasps> Evil Ryu. <laughs> If it was literally any other character, I'd probably agree, but it just being a recolor of an existing spirit but with evil being added just makes me laugh every time. It makes it seem like ruining the spirit list was some sort of petty evil scheme. Also, I know nothing about Street Fighter, but now I can only imagine Evil Ryu as being the most incredibly petty evil villain ever. Rinsible says, you can't select a certain version of a stage. Like, what if I wanted to play on Halberd exclusively, or just the island in Isle Delfino? This is a feature that I have wanted for a long time. The Minecraft world stage is pretty much the only stage to do this, where you you can choose what biome you want to play on with a button combo. That makes this stage, in my opinion, one of the absolute best in this series. So why don't other stages let you play on certain transformations with a combo as well? For example, Arena Ferox has four different forms the stage can be on with hazards off, but there's absolutely no way to select which one you get, so it's up to chance if you get the one you want or not. Plus, like Rinsible said, some stages transform to several different layouts, so being able to say, choose to play on the tower portion of Mushroom Kingdom U should be an option. Mitchell says that Pac-Man does not play his iconic death sound when dying, but Mega Man does and gets the particles with it. This one has always been really baffling to me. I mean, that's like the most iconic dying noise right next to Mario. Personally, I think it would be absolutely perfect for a Star KO animation. I mean, listen to this. <laughs> I mean, for some reason, he's just completely silent during this, which really sucks. Honestly, I think it'd be cool if more characters had unique death stuff too, like Mario getting his death noise, Sonic losing rings, and so on. Emperor Cubone says, I get not including stages that are basically the same, like Sector Z and Corneria, even though they kept Fountain Dreams, Yoshi Story, Take Your Pick, but why aren't all the original concept stages back, like Pokey Floats? I mean, other than laziness. I completely agree with this take. I find it especially insulting due to how many gaps there are on the stage selection screen. It feels so weird for stages like Pokey Floats and Rainbow Road to be cut, even though they're two of the most popular stages in the franchise. I mean, I could maybe see some arguments for some of the others, but those two in particular feel like such stupid exclusions to me. Yellow says, Lucina and Marth's down air spike for only one frame, and Pyrus down air has a way more generous spiking window for being the same type of move. Okay, honestly, I'm fine with Marth and Lucina spike only lasting for one frame. I'm only including this to make fun of Pyromanes again. Good Gaming GH says, Hey, Odyssey Central, I'm a big fan of Stronger Than Oh, do with this comment whatever you want. Oh, cool. Diogo Octo says, Ken mains. I don't need to say anything more. Based. True. Aga. I really don't think we've had a coherent nitpick in like a year. I need to get better at picking these. Alga says, Why did Wario and Little Mac lose costumes when they already got extra costumes working in Brawl? I get Nintendo probably wanting to have everyone on the roster have the same number of costumes, but I really don't think that needs to be a thing. If they have an idea for a costume, I see no reason for them to have to remove an existing one. And making Mac lose eight costumes when he had 16 in Smash 4 is really silly. Definitely agree with this comment. Our final one for the day comes from Marsho. Why is Minecraft World not called New World? SMH my head makes the stage 2 out of 10. Double thumbs down. <laughs> 
massive agree here. That's like the only problem with this stage. Minecraft World isn't the worst name, but come on. New World fits so well since it's the default name of a world you make in Minecraft. Hopefully this will get its name changed like some other stages have in the past. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you all want to hear the Endermen cry in pain whenever you kill them? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you all thought of this format of using comments for some of the video. I thought it was a lot of fun being able to respond to you guys, and I'd love to do it more in the future. It wouldn't have to just be nitpicks either. Maybe we could do stuff like hot takes or whatever else. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.